Okay, so we are now in week two, hopefully. It's a Tuesday, if you're listening to this now. So we're looking at a new type of path and circuit. Last week we had Euler, Eulerian paths and circuits. Now we've got a Hamiltonian path and circuit. Now Hamiltonian was named after an English mathematician. It wasn't named after, it wasn't named after Sabine Hamilton in year 12 or anything like that. Or Formula One drivers, if you even know your Formula One drivers. Anyway, so last week we had Eulerian paths and that's when we have to travel along each edge. So that was in last week's notes. We have to travel along each edge only once, e.g. postal deliveries or garbage collecting. But the difference now is Hamiltonian paths are paths where we have to visit each vertex once only, but we don't have to use every edge. So for instance, if you were a salesperson and you had to, deliver, and you had to visit uh, all your towns, you don't want to travel along every road, you just want to get there as quick as you can. So you visit towns and use the shortest distances. So uh, copy that down and when you're ready, you can press play again. Okay, so um, Mr. Coe's with me today. It's, a, it's Sunday. We're actually here at school on Sunday and Mr. Coe's a few metres away. So he's going to chime in in case I miss anything and we'll be interested to see if you pick up uh, from both our voices. So anything more on this, on this slide, Mr. Coe? No, I don't think so. Okay, it's straightforward. Let's go. So for instance, if we have a look at a simple network, Mr. Coe will have a look at a Hamiltonian path. Now, Hamiltonian path is vertices, not roads. So things you just need to remember is Again, you just need to go to every single vertex, so don't worry about the actual uh, edges. And look, we've got a couple of examples down here underneath, across here. So if I start at A, then move across to B, then come to C, then D, then E, I have visited every single vertice. Um, I don't need to go back to the start. I certainly don't need to use every single edge. So that's it. I've completed a Hamiltonian path. Now, there's a whole bunch. There's a whole bunch on this particular one. So another example could be I could go A down to E, cross to B, probably not the best colour, to D and to C. And again, I've completed a Hamiltonian path. So what I'd actually like you to do is quickly draw up the original and just see if you can draw a Hamiltonian path that's different from the two that we've given you examples of. Now, if you're a salesman, it's sometimes you want to get back to where you started from. So those Hamiltonian paths, they're okay and they're a path, but I think in the next slide, we're going to be looking at a Hamiltonian circuit. So a Hamiltonian path, if you finish, if you start and you finish at the same place, wherever that place is, now we have what we've got a circuit and we've had circuits before you know as long as you start and finish at the same spot you've got a circuit if you're just traveling along from somewhere to somewhere that's a path but a circuit is you have to get back to the same spot but the difference is um, with hamiltonian versus euler hamiltonian you don't have to use every single edge but in this particular case we want to get back to where we started from so can you make a note of that and when you're ready press play again Okay, we're back again, and for instance, here's the same graph that we've just drawn before, and we have uh, two examples of the same graph we've already highlighted that are circuits. So in this particular case, we started at A, and we've gone along B to C to D to E to A, and we finished at the same spot, so the salesperson is back home. But I guess the thing when we're talking about circuits is that actually, although although this particular example that Mr. Ryan just did started and finished at A, because it is a circuit, you can actually start and finish at any of the vertices, provided that you stay on that circuit and on the path that we've drawn there, you'll end up back where you started from. So I guess that's a key point in regard to circuits compared with paths, is that really you Although we used A as an example, it could actually be any of these. If you then look at the one below, we've chosen a different circuit. Um, but again, we've gone, we've visited every single circuit. Vertex. Uh, vertex yep. Apologies. We've visited every single vertex. We've followed a path, and then we've come back to where we started from. That's the key learning from this particular example. Okay, so copy, if you want to copy those down, copy them down. When you're ready, hit play again. So in those two examples, they may one of those journeys might be shorter than the other because in the, in the first one, we haven't used the internal network. 
and maybe those roads are shorter or maybe those roads are longer. So those are the sort of things we're gonna be looking at later, which path is the shortest path. So the shortest path, and this has a number of applications such as the salesperson does wanna be on the drive longer than they need to be if they're going between towns. So a shortest path um, is, is looking at the network, looking at uh, distances that are gonna be written on the graphs and we're just looking for the shortest path. Now, normally, normally we want it, we not, we want to get back to the starting spot, but sometimes the problem will say you're just going from some place A to some place B, and you don't have to get back to A. But the question has to state which way we're going. Okay, so uh, copy that down, and when you're ready, press play again. Okay, so you've got that down now, and there's a method. Now, <clears throat> a method is great, but there's also common sense also comes in. So this, there's a method that you might want to look at. And the first first one is you just pick the shortest distance from the start. And then you keep choosing the shortest distance until a circuit's been formed. So in this particular case, this question assumes you want to get back to where you started from. So the shortest distance, so the town, we're starting from D and the shortest distance is DA. So we're going to highlight DA. And then from, from the position A, you've only got two numbers. You've got a six or a nine. So we're going to go across the six. Now, the next number would be a seven is the lowest number, that, but that takes you back to that takes you back in to where you started from, and that's no good because you're back to where you started from. So we take that out. So the next distance would be BE, which is an 11. Okay, so we've started along, and we go along. So if we went back up into D again, the shortest distance, we've completed circuit, so that's no good. So we want to get rid of that, and we go along the bottom E, up to up the W, and then back home. And that would be the shortest network, the shortest circuit. Okay, copy that down, and when you're ready, press. Okay, so you're back, you're back with us. So the next slide, I think, is just finishing off. So we just, yeah, I think in this one, I had done this as two slides. So we've done the first part, uh, then across, up, uh, then, that's great. And we're back home again. So we've already done that one, and that's it. Now, the shortest path would just be adding up those numbers, so we've got the 3, the 6, the 11, 18, 3, yeah, so it's at your 3, 6, 11, 18, 10, 8, straight on your calculator. And the answer would be 56. Now, hopefully, you know, it might be distances, kilometres or whatever, but um, the context of the question will tell you what it is. So when you're ready, uh, copy that down. And when you're ready, press play again. And here's an example where we don't want to go back to where we started from. So we're looking for the shortest distance from A to G. So the context of the question is, we're going from one place to another. We don't have to go back to where we started from. So the shortest distance from A, oh, he's just rubbed that out on me. Sorry, he's sorry. back in. And the shortest distance from A is an 11. So we go along that journey. Now, at, when we get to B, we're still trying to get to G. Now, obviously, we could go straight. We could go straight along the bottom, and then our journey would be finished. And that's, that could be the right answer. So sometimes you, you have to use your common sense. The algorithm doesn't say pick the biggest number, but at the back of your mind, you say, well, that distance is going to be 11 plus 31, which is 42, but that's probably not the shortest one. So let's go take that one off again. And when we get to B, rather than picking the 31, let's choose the 17, choose the 10, which takes us up to F. Now at that stage here, we've used... Um, Two, two roads, and we've got one more road to get down to G, which would be just along the 17. Well, it's two, two yeah, options. There's once, two options, you're once, right. Once we're at F, according to our um, uh, shortest path formula, and I guess this is where we want you guys to really think about it, is the shortest one here is actually 8. However, once you, if you use that 8, you then have to use the 22 to get down, and therefore our formula actually does fall down so although if unsure you really should be considering going for the shortest one what i'd like you to see i guess here if we're at f is that to, to go straight home to e is just 17 when to go the shortest way initially would actually end up being longer because you get 8 plus 22 that would take 30 minutes or kilometers whatever it is when going straight from f to g is 17. so Definitely think about which one is the shortest one. That's sort of your first option, but you've really got to consider the other things that are available to you. 
Now, in this particular case, we get 17 plus 10 plus 17. No, it was 11. Sorry, 11, 10, 17, which is 38. 38, I agree. Now, even, I mean, another option that we, we talked about before was whether you go along the bottom here. Now, although it would be less roads that you went on, it would actually be 11 plus 31, which is 42. Yep. So you just you do have to really um, think on your feet in, in yep. this particular example. And again, like at the end of the day, like we're just going to be asking you to find the shortest path, and you can certainly explore options and then just pick the lowest option, and that's the winner. So if you pick 42 and say that's the answer, then you're not being you're not being careful, and you won't get you won't get the full marks. Um, but as I said, look, there there are steps to follow, but also common sense. So I want you to copy down that one. I think the next slide actually. Next, the next slide actually just puts those answers together. And so the distance from, from A to G, the shortest distance is the 11, 21, 38 units. So now we've got an exercise for you to follow and exercise 21D, page 176. And when you finish that, that's, that's it. You might want to do some more revision on previous exercises, but we're flying along today. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next lesson.